Dear Steve Sweeney, Morningstar International Editor, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be back again. Thank you. Um, you are uh, you were in Kurdistan. Um, you have uh, just arrived to UK. What is the update from the ground? What you bring us from there? Well, as you've probably seen, um, yeah, if you if you read the Morning Star or, or follow, you've been following events on um, largely on, on social media. The, there's a deep crisis unfolding in in Kurdistan at the moment, and um, it started really with the demonstrations over a failure to pay public sector workers. Um, many of them, teachers, um, uh, nurses, haven't been paid properly since uh, since March or April, uh, April this year. That I think they've received, or some, those that have received salaries, have received um, you know, only four payments over the course of the year. And even those payments themselves have been hit by um, huge cuts of, of uh, you know, of 20%. So there's been a strike that's been ongoing amongst public sector workers since October. And um, just last week, the protests um, started in in Slimani mainly, um, in, 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 the, in the city, uh, the city centre there, which is where, um, where the action started. And of course, that was met with a violent response from the authorities who, um, it was a peaceful protest to, um, you know, as well. And it was met by a volley of tear gas and live bullets. One of the MP opposition MPs from the Goram uh, Goram movement was knocked unconscious um, during this protest. This was last last um, Thursday, uh, so Wednesday and Thursday. But then since then, the um, the protests have spread, and they've become more um, really the, you know uh, uh, about more than public sector pay and um, yeah and uh, and a poor infrastructure. Now it's um, it, they've grown into these. Uh, very large um, protests against corruption, against nepotism, and they're targeting the main political parties. So the the Barzani, the Kurdistan Democratic Party, are the main target of um, of the protests, um, and and the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, but also the Goran movement have been uh, targeted as well. So what we've seen is while protesters have taken to the street um, in anger, they've been met with, like I said, they've been uh, had tear gas fired upon them, um, live bullets. So there's been a number of people number of people killed um nine so far um and you know that there's the signs that that's um you know that, that there could be more by the time that this is um uh, this is this is uh, broadcast two children amongst those uh, dead a 13 year old boy who was uh, who was shot in the neck and uh, a 15 a 15 year old student as well that's that's been among the among the dead and they're mainly young young people so in retaliation they've targeted an anger really with um, the 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 sort of the corruption and the nepotism amongst the political parties. They burnt down the offices of the KDP and and the PUK and and the Goran movement. It's mainly been focused in Slimani province at the moment, but there's signs that it's starting to spread in Erbil. It's obviously a little bit harder for people to protest because it's dominated by the Kurdistan Democratic Party. At the same time, the protests are are, are happening. Um, the media is being um, stopped from from reporting on it um, accurately. So um, those uh, media outlets that are critical of the government, or and in particular critical of the KDP, for example, NRTV had their uh, offices raided and equipment confiscated, and they've been hit with a broadcasting ban. So they've been shut down. The internet is being um, severely restricted as well. So people are, you know, it's, it's very difficult to get accurate information out of out of the region but uh, people are doing uh, are doing what they can but this you know this is a very serious situation developing in in the region and it's a it's a deep crisis and it's difficult to see at the moment how this is um, how this is going to be resolved so basically as you know the appg's um, in inquiry is on as well and it's ending tomorrow also uh, what is your observation what else needs to be get done do you think um uh, the europe can have any impact on the ground um what's happening in there well i mean it has to just to start off with i mean there has been a, a wall of silence really from from the international community over what's happening and you know there's the, the, the situation is absolutely critical. There's peaceful protesters that are being fired upon um, by uh, by government uh, government forces, and you know people are saying to me, "Look, the the you know the streets of Kurdistan are 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 running red with the blood of our children," and they're appealing for um, you know for 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 something. Um, but what they what they want is deep and meaningful political change, and. Um, uh, 
you mentioned the APPG. Now, I know that there's two of them, parallel APPGs, one that deals with Kurds in, um, in Syria, in, in Turkey, and in and Iran. But I have to say that the APPG for, um, for, for Iraqi Kurdistan um, is not fulfilling its role properly and it's not said anything about the um uh, about the current situation in fact just recently uh, i i i followed them on social media members of that appg were shamefully display showing um you know uh, photographs of themselves with pomegranates from halabja well in halabja people are being you know being battered on the on the streets at the moment and they're demanding you know political change and, I, and I'm, I'm, it's shameful to say but the appg is operating as the mouthpiece of the barzanis in in westminster and it needs to fundamentally change um you know because at the moment as it stands it's not it's not fit for purpose what we really don't want is outside intervention and this is the um uh, the prime minister said barzani said um in a press conference yesterday a rambling press conference it was that he blamed syria he blamed uh, the foreign you know for outside hands and, and foreigners for stoking the protests the day before and and some of the uh, barzani associated media like rudal and kurdistan 24 have you know been spreading the the peddling the lie that it's the the pkk that are that are responsible for violence but that's not true this is the people rising up um against a corrupt and broken political system and and this is them exercising their you know the, the, their voice and they want you know it's change that they want outside intervention i don't know you know if that's particularly helpful uh, helpful at this stage but the you know what needs to happen is you know, there needs to be um you know um, democratic change w within the region at the moment as you as you'll know um and for for decades it's been dominated by two um, two families, essentially the the Barzani's and, and and the Talibani's. Now there's issues around, you know, that the Barzani's, uh, sorry, the government is trying to KRG is trying to blame Baghdad for the impasse and saying that they're not releasing the, um, you know, their portion of the federal budget to um, to Kurdistan, and you know they're blaming a drop in oil prices and um, and COVID nineteen. Now some of this might be true, um, but there's been a pretty poor deal struck with turkey actually where you know the, where huge sums of money are leaving uh, leaving the region in in this 50 year uh, 50 year deal but huge sums remain and this is what people are saying where is the money where is that oil money and they're they're asking why they're living in poverty um and struggling to provide uh, provide basics i mean we have electricity shortages with kirkuk oil field the world's second largest oil field just up the road and we're sh suffering electricity shortages um across the region but they're living living lives of of luxury, a playboy lifestyle, um, while it's poverty for for the rest of the country. Now, this is a you know you'll know the Kurdistan region is rich in natural resources. It, uh, it, you know it, there, there are many kind of you know particularly oil, um, but there's many other many other things. It should be it should be rich uh, a rich um, you know ri a rich part of the world. Um, very short, very briefly. What is the um, uh, updates from the Mahmoud camp? Well, um, it, I've spoken to people in 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 Mahmoor, and uh, again, there, you know, this is um, uh, you know, additional to the the protests that are sweeping across the region. This huge, this huge anti-government uprising. Uh, at the same time, of course, the um, the KDP forces, the Peshmerga forces, have mobilised, as we know, to Shengal. And you know, there's there's fear of an invasion uh, there. We don't know what's going to happen there, but after the security deal, which was stitched up by the behind the backs of um, you know, of the people there to break the um, you know the influence they want of the of the PKK, and the same with Mahmoud. Mahmoud is still under an embargo, but from the United Nations, we know there's been a COVID nineteen outbreak, and people there are very very fearful of uh, of what's going to happen. They tell me that um, Turkish jets are, are flying overhead every every single night, jets and and drones, um, and they're they're you know they're, they're, there's the very real um threat of of bombs dropping there but i have to say that you know we have to say that what's happening the instability in the region at, at the moment and the the government turning on its own own people um creates a, a situation that could uh, see isis get a foothold back in the region and nobody really wants to see that this is a, a very volatile a very volatile situation and it has the you know it has the potential to destabilize not just the kurdistan region but the whole of of the middle east too um we're in a you know it's a really critical stage um you know really critical stage at the moment it's quite these are quite dangerous times but the people on the streets are saying look you know there's been nine people that have been shot dead 
nine people, including two children, a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old, uh, uh, bo two boys, uh, have been shot dead by, by Peshmerga forces. There's cracks showing um, in, the, in the ruling parties. One of the leading um, uh, PUK officials today um, scoffed at Barzani's claim about foreign, uh, foreign influence. There's talk of Peshmerga in some of the PUK controlled regions saying that they're not going to, that they'll defy orders. Not only will they refuse to attack um, the protesters if they're asked, um, asked to do so, but they'll turn on the, P, uh, on, on the KDP. So this also has the potential of, of spilling into uh, a, you know, an intra-Kurdish uh, civil war as well. And we know um, that the KDP have Peshmerga. I was in Kandil um, last weekend and we were celebrating the, the anniversary, the foundation of the PKK. Um, but, but the people there were telling me that there's, you know, that there's thousands of um, Turkish troops in the, um, you know, in the mountain, in the Kandil mountains with KDP forces. They're working, working together just today. And, and I've written, it, it will appear in tomorrow's morning star newspaper, but um, I've, I've written a story that says that Turkish troops are actually in the KDP controlled areas of Iraqi Kurdistan. Now there was video footage of them sharing, um, you know, being welcomed and and fed, you know, in a traditional Kurdish welcome with, you know, with lots of food. But there there were Turkish um, uh, Turkish soldiers, and whether they're going to be deployed on the streets to quell protests, there's what's happened now is the opposition parties have requested a demonstration in Erbil, and they've they've uh, asked for for permission for this. It's likely to be denied, but now um, you know protests and illegal gatherings have been banned, and the government says that they'll arrest people that defy those orders. It's it's in, it'll be interesting to see how. Um, how this development, how this develops. What's needed on the ground, I think, at the moment, what's missing is any kind of organisational leadership. At the moment, there's kind of a spontaneous um, reaction of 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 the people, and uh, there's no sign of them backing down. And they say that they're going to stay on the streets and they'll keep protesting um, and, until the government resigns. And that's what they're calling for. Um, very short, very briefly. Again, um, what is the exact message um, uh, from the Kurdistan to the uh, groups like APPG and some institutions that are working on the Kurdish struggle? Uh, uh, what is the exact message from the community from Kurdistan? Well, well what they're saying is, um, is is very very clearly they want their voices to be heard. And at the moment, they're not. That's not. That, you know, that's not happening. They want their voices to be heard. They want the truth to be told. They told me to come back and and speak to people, speak to MPs, speak to trade unionists, speak to progressives, and tell the truth about what's happening. Um, about what's happening on the ground. They're calling. They're saying, look, you, you, you know that. Uh, the they they're very aware of what's happening here and they're calling on the imperialist powers to stop their blanket support for um for president type Erdogan in in Turkey um they're stop you know to stop their blanket support for for Barzani and stop you know stop propping up these uh, you know these these brutal uh, brutal regimes that are you know that are killing Kurds now you know we know once you pull the mask you know standing behind um Barzani is type Erdogan and standing by behind Tayyip Erdogan are the forces of imperialism. Now we know that they're you know that they're colluding. Um, you know they have overlapping interests. U.S. imperialism wants to grab you know, oil and resources and 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 uh, control of the Middle East and uh, and of the region. Whereas Tayyip Erdogan's aim is the genocide of the Kurdish people. Now these happen to be overlapping. People, are, you know, when I've spoken to people, they're actually really um, they're angry, but they're deeply, deeply hurt. And they're hurt because they're seeing the, what they call their brothers, um, their Kurdish brothers that are turning their guns against against them. This is what they're saying. They want peace. They want Kurdish unity, and and that's what they're calling for. But they're also calling for that to be reflected in you know within the APPG and and amongst the national community. And they want the truth to be told happening. Um, you know, not the the lies that are being spun. Um, you know, at the moment. I was, you know, unfortunately, PPG uh, for Iraqi Kurdistan is, is not doing its job properly. I was aware of a briefing that was given to MPs and trade unionists um, last Friday by a massive PR coup that was given to um, the KDP and Barzani at the same time that, 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 that you know, that, um, that they were being briefed about stability and, and the situation in the region. People were out on the streets being shot. 
you know this is this is what you know, was happening and and you know they're being dangerously misled and you know the, the what we need is is international solidarity and that means progressive organizations and trade union trade unionists actually now standing up um in solidarity with the people of kurdistan um with your observations and your experience do you think um is it a war likely to happen or a civil war can or any kind of conflict can explode in a second what is your observations from the ground very short very briefly please i think it has the potential to explode into a you know a deadly uh, intra-kurdish civil war we saw this again between the PU and KDP in the, in the 90s, 30,000 people at least. Uh, you know, that's a conservative estimate. Were killed. Uh, were killed during that um, during that conflict. And we know that the KDP wants is driving to war. And you know, we've seen this in, as I said, in the Kandil in the Kandil Mountains. They're they're working with Turkish troops there, um, and they've threatened the the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers Party, um, in those regions. They're they're engaging with them in the Gara Mountains regions as well. While at the same time, this is happening, Turkish jets are bombing the border region and they're targeting civilians and uh yeah and uh, and infrastructure so there's a drive to war that's this drive to war i have to say is opposed there's, there's kind of a united anti-war front from all the opposition parties um including pkk but this you know it also includes puk the goran movement the kurdistan communist party um all all the opposition parties are united against uh, against the war the people are against uh oppose the war so i mean there's there's a there's a huge weight of um you know uh, of opinion behind uh, behind a war, but with the, pro the street protests that are, that are happening, if they're still killing children and they're still killing um, killing the uh, the people of, of Kurdistan, then it could it could uh, develop into in, into a civil war. That's a very very real danger, and the danger is that this instability doesn't just stick. You know, we're, we're seeing instability in in central you know in the Iraqi central government uh, region as well. There's been huge political instability instability there, but this really has the danger of of allowing ISIS to get a foothold. Uh, back in in you know, back in the region and again in, in the Middle East, that's that's a very real danger. That's why you know, we absolutely have to do everything. Everybody who is uh, a, you know a trade unionist, whether you're a parliamentarian, a progressive, a Labour Party member, a Green Party member, an SNP member, or whatever, every single sinew should and every effort should be made into stopping this war. That's that's an absolute must at this stage. He is Steve Sweeney from uh, Morning Star International uh, editor. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for the updates from the Kurdistan, the fresh and the uh, updates from uh, from the first person. Uh, thank you for your comment. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.